This video is sponsored by Squarespace, a tool that makes it easy to build a beautiful website for anyone. Recently, there has been a lot of talk about forever chemicals found in water-repellent outdoor clothing that are toxic and that cause cancer. I dug down this rabbit hole really, really deep, and after hours and hours of research, I realized that the situation is much more grave and much more dangerous than what I thought initially. To illustrate my point, from all this hiking gear, how much of it would you guess is toxic? Probably the rain pants and the rain jacket, right? The truth is that probably about 90% of the gear that you see over here has forever chemicals in it. Even the items that you wouldn't expect, like possibly even the wool socks, the t-shirt and the backpack. Forever chemicals, other called PFAS or PFCs, are a group of industrial chemicals that consist of a chain of carbon atoms surrounded by fluorine. When you apply these chemicals to other materials, it magically increases their durability, their water resistance, their oil resistance, and their fire resistance. They were invented back in 1934, and in 1950s, one of these chemicals called Teflon became widely used by DuPont for manufacturing nonstick cookware. Cookware never needs scouring. If it has DuPont, Teflon. Over the years, 3M and other manufacturers started using these chemicals in other applications as well, like cosmetics, carpets, ski wax, pizza boxes, paper coffee cups, and all of these other products. Regarding hiking gear, the most popular case is probably Gore-Tex. PFAS is actually what made Gore-Tex Gore-Tex, because by using it in their membranes, it allowed their fabrics to be water resistant while still being breathable. PFAS were these magical chemicals that made everything better. Chemistry is the, is the practice of magic. Everything was going great. Until it wasn't. But before we continue, let's quickly talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're looking to build a website, whether that's a portfolio, a blog, or an e-commerce store, Squarespace has you covered. With their new Blueprint AI, making a website is now easier than ever, because you simply need to answer a few questions about how you want the site to look, and the AI will do everything for you. They also do a really good job at search engine optimization. You do not need to buy any additional plugins for this. Simply Add the information about your site as well as each individual page in the settings and you're all set. But what I really like about them is that you can very easily customize your website however you want to because they have a ton of different templates for different pages or for different elements. Simply add them to your site in a few clicks, edit the text, the images or anything else if you want to and you're good to go. They also have a 14-day free trial which allows you to try them out and build the website before paying for anything which you can get by going to squarespace.com. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash oscarhikes to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. In 1998, one farmer sued DuPont because he was certain that the nearby plant that was manufacturing the chemicals needed for Teflon was what's causing their natural deaths in a lot of his cattle. And that was just the tip of the iceberg because up until 2017, DuPont alone has settled over 3,500 different lawsuits regarding PFOA-related diseases. A lot of people realize that PFAS aren't these magical chemicals that fix everything, and instead they're more like a genie in a bottle not exactly what you wished for. It's extremely hard to prove the exact health effects of PFAS, but numerous studies have shown that they are toxic, that they cause cancer, and all of these other serious health effects. And what's even worse is that there's no safe amount for human consumption. Even ingesting one tiny particle increases their chances of having these bad health effects. And what's even, even worse is that these chemicals can and do bioaccumulate in your body. In only about five to eight years, about 50% of the PFAS that you ingested exit your body. And what's even, even, even worse is that they do not break down very quickly. They're called forever chemicals because in natural conditions, they do not break down for hundreds or even thousands of years. So when they get released out to the nature, either by washing your rain jacket through landfills and airports or from wastewater spills and release gases from factories, they do not break down over time. Instead, they seep down into the groundwaters and then to rivers, lakes, the sea, your tap water. The unfortunate reality is that nowadays nearly all of us have PFAS in our bodies because they're nearly impossible to avoid. 
starting from early 2000s, after these lawsuits brought to light how harmful these chemicals actually are, these large manufacturers essentially started playing a game of whack-a-mole. When one type of PFAS was banned, they simply switched to another type of PFAS. PFAS is an extremely large group of industrial chemicals, which consists of over 10,000 different chemicals, and right now only a handful are banned by the legislation. There are some talks about banning them as a group of chemicals, especially in the EU, but unfortunately that's not the case right now. In 2016, Greenpeace tested over 40 different outdoors products for polyfluorinated chemicals, which included jackets, trousers, shoes, backpacks, tents, sleeping bags, and gloves from popular outdoor brands. They found these forever chemicals in all of these product categories, except for the gloves. And from these 40 products that they tested, only four didn't contain any PFAS. Most commonly, PFAS in outdoor gear are used in the waterproof membranes of rain jackets, rain pants, tents, backpacks, dry sacks, and footwear, DWR treatments in treated down, and non-stick coatings for cookware. But very often, a lot of manufacturers also unintentionally use them in other types of products, like for example, base layers, merino socks, cotton or synthetic t-shirts, and other types of products. That's because they usually buy their materials or some part of their materials from third-party suppliers. And currently there aren't any laws that ask these third-party manufacturers to disclose whether they use PFAS in the manufacturing. Manufacturers usually include PFAS in outdoor gear for three reasons. They're cheaper, they're easier to use during the manufacturing process, and currently they have better technical performance compared to safe alternatives. And the third problem, unfortunately, is the biggest one. Safe alternatives actually can resist water just as well as PFAS while being breathable at the same time, but unfortunately they can't also resist stains and oil at the same time. This means that over time, these safe alternatives will soak up oils from your sweat, your sunscreen, and other sources, and they'll stop working as efficiently in rain until they're washed and maintained. But in my opinion, that's a pretty small downside to have, especially if the other option is that the gear causes cancer. Luckily, there are some good news regarding PFAS and hiking gear. First of all, there are a few brands that have switched to PFAS-free manufacturing since as early as 2009. These include Nikwax, Paca Apparel, Keen Footwear, Mystery Ranch, Jack Wolfskin, Houdini, Vod, Polartec, Fjall Robin, Patagonia, and Detour. Then there are a few brands that only market a few of their existing products as PFAS-free. Some of these include the Nemo tents with their new Osmos fabric, Arcteric, Black Diamond, Marmot, and Mammoth. And then, unfortunately, there are a lot of other brands that are essentially dragging their feet and they're not willing to switch to PFAS-free alternatives. But luckily, things are about to change because California, New York, Massachusetts, and Maine have introduced new laws that will ban PFAS as a chemical group in most outdoor gear as early as 2025. This means that if these brands want to continue selling these products, especially in California, they'll need to go PFAS-free by the beginning of next year. Brands like Outdoor Research, Outdoor Vitals, and REI have promised to go PFAS-free by the beginning of next year. So, will you get cancer from your Gore-Tex jacket? Probably not, because you're not directly drinking or eating from the jacket. But when you do wash gear that uses PFAS or it naturally degrades over time, you do release these harmful chemicals out into the nature through the groundwaters. Realistically, the people that are most affected by this are the people who work in the factories that make gear and other products using PFAS or the people that live near these factories or near landfills or near airports. Another unfortunate risk group is small children because studies have shown that children can have 10 times the concentration of PFAS in their body compared to their mothers. If you want to stop supporting this PFAS industry, then the best thing that you can do is reach out to the people that make the laws and let them know that you don't want fluorocarbons in any step of the manufacturing process. Another thing that you could do is stop buying and using products that contain PFAS, but honestly, outside of the hiking gear industry starting next year, it's a much easier thing to say than to actually do, because unfortunately nowadays almost anything contains PFAS. And lastly, if you want to learn more about this subject, there's a very good podcast series from The Outdoor Minimalist, which I've linked out to down in the video description. If you're interested in hiking, check out the rest of my channel and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!